Good morning, children. Uh, we have seen uh, yesterday that, um, yes, development is important, the resources are there, but then contrary to what the earlier belief was that resources, because they happen to be gift of nature, things are to be, those things are considered, should be rather considered to be free and to be used as much as one wanted and irrespective of the consequences no one had to pay for anything everything belonged to everyone but then it was this was something which continued till uh, the birth uh, probably the birth of a industrial revolution that happened in 17th and 18th century till then you know these uh, resource they were not considered as resources at all in the first place it was only after that when industrialization started happening then these things these gifts of nature became raw materials and in many cases the fi uh, the finished products themselves that the uh, these things uh, you know now were under brought uh, were, were brought under the purview of either the government or the wealthy persons so that is uh, when resources uh, became actually very, very expensive and they were considered to be, yes, no, that uh, yes, they are gifts of God, but no, they do not belong to everyone. And today we would start the, uh, and that is the reason why we, uh, after indiscriminate use of uh, resources for the last 100, 150 years, now in the early 1990s, because it the realization had uh, dawned much before that, but by early 1990s, we had, uh, we had an earth summit in Rio uh, de Janeiro, Brazil, where uh, the world leaders, uh, uh, you know, emphasized the importance of sustainable development, right? So today we start with the topic of resource planning. Now, planning is the widely accepted strategy for judicious use of resources. It has importance in a country like India, which has enormous diversity of availability of resources. There are regions which are rich in certain types of resources, but are deficient in some other resources. There are certain regions which can be considered self-sufficient in terms of the availability of resources, and there would be some regions which have acute shortage of certain vital resources. For example, the states of Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh are rich in minerals and coal deposits. However, Arunachal Pradesh has abundance of water resources but lacks in infrastructure development. The state of Rajasthan is very well endowed with solar and wind energy but lacks in water resources. The cold deserts of Ladakh, relatively isolated from the rest of the country, has very rich cultural heritage but is deficient in water, infrastructure and some vital minerals. This calls for balanced resource planning in the national, state, regional and local levels. Yes, yeah, students, this is easier said than done, you know, because you have to understand that, uh, 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 you know, different parts of India would have, or any country for that matter, would be rich in different, different uh, resources. You know, it cannot be rich in everything and uh, uh, everything cannot be there in one place. So all this thing, all these things are distributed because uh, that's how... Uh, uh, Mother Nature has evolved. Now you have to, because we are humans, we have to ensure that everyone has employment, we have to ensure that the economy runs, and taking care of all those issues, it is imperative that yes, we actually <coughs> do our homeworks properly and plan things accordingly so that Yes, there isn't a great amount of lopsided development. You know, you have to understand that, yes, uh, if uh, Rajasthan happens to be endowed with abundant amount of solar energy, then you need to uh, understand that, yes, it is the solar panels, the, you have to rather devote uh, energy and resources in uh, producing electricity through solar panels rather than uh, setting up huge huge power plants that run on coal because then that is not financially viable and uh, it doesn't make sense and in a similar fashion like you see in uh, the himalayan regions of india now 
because again himalayan region happens to be uh, uh, you know in mountains you cannot have huge uh, power plants uh, which would run on coal or uh, fuel for the, or oil for that matter and so naturally now in the himalayan areas of india you whether right from arunachal to uttarakhand you would see or kashmir for that matter you would see numerous hydel projects which keep coming up all the time damming of rivers so that you can generate electricity as well as provide water uh, year round to your farmers so that is how it needs to be balanced and that's what they are trying to say resource planning in india resource planning is a complex process which involves identification and inventory of resources across the regions of the country this involves surveying mapping qualitative and quantitative estimation and measurement of resources it essentially is telling you that you need to keep all that hisab kitab right ki aapke uh, aapke desh mein kitna resource hai kya kya cheeze hain uplabdh aapke desh mein unki quality kya hai what quality raw materials or uh, natural resources are available within your geographies ye sab you have to determine and you have to determine you can do that only by extensive surveying right so the second point is evolving a planning structure endowed with appropriate technology skill and institutional setup for implementing resource development plans guys even if i that's what uh, that's what it is trying to say that even now if i have determined mere paas kya hai kya nahi hai kahan pe hai desh ke kis rajya mein hai desh ke kis bhag mein hai maine sab kuch maan lijiye if i have done all the surveys but i still do not have the institutional setup to actually make any good use of it for example agar mujhe factory bithani hai to factory bithane ke liye paise chahiye paise kahan se aayenge bank se main qarz lunga बैंकिंग अगर प्रणाली अगर आपकी सुचारू रूप से नहीं चल रही अगर बैंकिंग प्रणाली आपकी उतनी मजबूत नहीं है तो वो कहाँ से कर्ज देगी फ्रॉम वे वुड इट गिव द लोन्स फॉर यू और फॉर दैट मैटर फॉर मी टू सेट अप दो पावर प्लान्स और फॉर दैट मैटर इनी फैक्ट्री विच विच कुड बी से फॉर एग्जाम्पल Uh, i might be uh, living in maharashtra in certain parts of maharashtra and uh, certain parts of maharashtra are very rich in iron ore now yes i have determined iron ore hai ye hai this is the quality of iron ore this is the quantity which is available in certain certain areas of maharashtra but then i do not the, the probably the country or the state does not provide me with those uh, facilities or those incentives to set up a factory by which i can make use of those raw materials those resources and make myself rich my country rich and also at the same time provide employment to probably at least 500 to 1000 people ye kab hoga when certain institutions are in place which can facilitate and promote all that right and the third point being matching the resource development plans with overall national development plans naturally every country uh, makes its plans guys like it's 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 like us jaise aapke ghar mein ya hamare ghar mein har mahine hum sochte hain yaar ye kya ha acha is 6 mahine mein ye karna hai acha ye 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 karna hai ye 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 nahi karna ye jo nahi karna hai wo agle 6 mahine mein dekhenge ya agle 3 mahine mein dekhenge guys it's that's exactly what that's uh, that's what exactly all the countries on uh, in the in the world do that they plan things ki bhai this is these are the things which are in priority these things need to be done expeditiously and these are the things which can be probably done later right so those things have also to be planned it cannot happen suddenly that uh, tonight you would uh, while sleeping you thought that yes today uh, tomorrow we would be concentrating as a nation that is you would we would be concentrating on uh, textile for another 5 years but in the morning when you wake up uh, you know you decide oh no 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 Uh, we should be concentrating on iron ore and then you make all the plans for um, uh, making uh, steel industries and setting up of steel industries but after 3 years you suddenly realize no 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 we have to uh, concentrate on agriculture because 46% of our uh, gdp still comes from agriculture so let us give more incentives to farmers guys that is not how things happen that's what it is trying to tell you here now 
Yeah. At the international level, the Club of Rome advocated resource conservation for the first time in a more systematic way in 1968. Uh, 1968. And uh, <clears throat> uh, that's what it is uh, saying that subsequently in 1974, the Gandhian philosophy was once again presented by Schumacher in his book Small is Beautiful. The seminal contribution with respect to resource, what was the Gandhian philosophy? That is, um, there is uh, enough for everybody's need and not for everybody's greed. Guys, what Mahatma Gandhi said way, way before this uh, conservation of natural resources became a buzzword and everyone was very uh, conscious and careful about it. He said it much before that, yes, the Mother Nature has provided all of us uh, to take care of our needs, but not our greed. Guys, so and if if the whole need for the use of uh, natural resources is being driven by greed, then naturally it is very difficult to keep it on generation after generation because there would, this would come to you at a great cost to the environment, to the world around you, to the habitation around you. And of course, the enormous amount of pollution, everything, everything. You have yourself seen and you must have seen it in news and videos that for the last uh, uh, three months, uh, because of this corona thing, when the whole world has come to a standstill, then, um, you know, the environment is happy, the rivers are much, much purer, uh, the jungles are green, uh, you know, the, everything uh, seems to be kind of uh, getting better and better. Uh, maybe definitely our pockets are empty, but then rest of the things are surely falling in place. So what does that essentially tell you? What it essentially tells you is that your definition of development has and uh, has not been in, uh, um, in harmony with the environment. Because the more de uh, development you do, apparently, uh, that is, that's what the definition of your development is, the more you get into it, the more harm you inflict on the environment. So naturally, uh, development and the environment are surely not in harmony with each other. So that is uh, what is being said here. Uh, we shall continue tomorrow. Thanks.